Hi, I'm Joan Lima, editor of The Economy, and here with me I've got Tim Nelson, head of Uber Compute at Uber, and founder of Infrastructure Masons. Uh, Tim, thanks a lot for talking to me. Mm -hmm. We know this industry is very critical to the digital economy today. Uh, in terms of criticality of the infrastructure, where are we in understanding the criticality of the infrastructure? Yeah, this is a very interesting question mm. because um, I don't believe that the world understands how mm. critical the underlying foundation mm. of the internet is. And if you look at the outages that have been happening, such as you know, British Airways and three airlines before that, just from a transportation standpoint, it mm. put transportation at a stop. Mm. Thousands and thousands of people were stranded. And then you think of other things, whether it's banking, Mm. or online delivery, or even just email, the basic things that everybody uses every day. Mm. It all goes over a network, connects to a data center. It is actually computed on a server inside of that data center, and it's stored. Mm. So when those systems go down, mm. the impacts around there, I don't think we've really calculated that mm. when it comes to disruption of the economy, mm. disruption of commerce. Mm. And um, I don't believe that data centers today are actually qualified appropriately mm. around that. Mm. Okay. And for example, when you say that, we know from an industry perspective there's a lot of work to do as well. Mm -hmm. But on the government side, there's not still a recognition of how critical this um, industry is. Yeah. And we have seen recent examples, as you mentioned, BA, and you mentioned financial services as well. And this is all very critical to any country's economy. Sure. And you also have terrorist threats, we have all those sort of things. Mm -hmm. And data centers are behind most of critical infrastructure today. So right. oil and gas refineries, all those sort of things. Mm -hmm. What role do governments need to play in this industry? I would say that the governments really need to understand uh, what they serve. Mm. I'm saying the data centers themselves. Mm. So what services are inside of those buildings? Mm. And um, so let's say life and safety. Mm. So 911 in the United States. Mm. Uh, can you call up and ensure that someone's going to answer when you have a life-threatening emergency? Mm. Most of those systems are in data centers somewhere. Mm. So if there's an outage and you can't actually make a call, someone can die. Right? So that's really the definition of critical services. And so whether it's hospitals, same thing. They're on a specific list because when it comes down to having power or fuel to do the backup generation for those locations, they're the ones that actually get it. And they can now commandeer gasoline and other things to ensure that those critical services are continuing. Now imagine uh, in the United States we had a brownout, right? a large power outage across the East Coast. It shut down the stock exchange. Massive Billions impact, yeah, from a, from a financial mm. standpoint. And so that's when you see the fragility inside mm. of the infrastructure. Mm. And so making sure that those systems mm. can stay up mm. is, mm. I'd say, mm. mission critical. Mm. Okay. And when it comes to actually recognizing data centers as mission critical infrastructure, mm -hmm. what sort of initiatives are you seeing in the industry or what sort of initiatives are actually missing mm -hmm. in the industry and the government side as well? So there's also, for example, in the European Union, there are some discussions yeah. into making data centers a recognized critical infrastructures alongside hospitals, uh, sure. oil refinery gas and all those sort of things. Yep. Um, where are we? What sort of initiatives do you see out there? So I haven't seen initiatives that are actually now addressing that directly. Mm. And I think if you look at the root cause, mm. it's that the majority of the world have no idea that this industry mm. exists. Mm. Okay. So, is that um, a bad thing? Uh, it actually is a bad thing for a couple mm. of different reasons. I mean, it's, it's nice to have the anonymity. Mm. We can go back and do what we need to do. Mm. But the problem is that um, they don't understand the dependencies that they have. Okay. So imagine when you pick up your phone and you can't actually connect to YouTube mm. or do whatever you need to do, it's frustrating. Mm. When you can't get to your bank account, Right, and all of those transactions are going over mm. some network and again into mm. a data center. And so I think there's a lack of understanding mm. and um, I think appreciation mm. to the role that the infrastructure plays. Mm. Now imagine mm. if your roads didn't work anymore. Mm. Of course, it would have an immediate impact on transportation and things. Mm. We're the digital highways. Mm. We're interconnecting all these different data centers, right? And we're the, the, basically the plants, mm. the data plants for the world. Mm. And so um, I think there needs to be an awareness around this mm. infrastructure so that both from the government mm. side and even the private side, mm. people, you know, they pick up their phone and they expect mm. everything to work. Mm. And when it doesn't work, they're just frustrated, right? Mm. But there are critical services running on mm. those things. Okay. And then in terms of building that awareness, for example, mm. uh, there are several industry initiatives, for example, CNET training just became a STEAM mm -hmm. ambassador. Yep. So they're going to take data centers to kids as young as seven yes. in schools. Yeah. Uh, of course, this is 
bit of a step further away yeah. uh, in terms of building the critical awareness. Yeah. But what sort of initiatives do you think need to go out there? Because this also comes down to building the skills gap because people are not even aware. Absolutely. Of infrastructure. So yeah, the, it's all connected. Yeah, you brought so, it, you bring up a really mm. important point because the awareness mm. is not just about the government side. Mm. Um, you know, I, I uh, started Infrastructure Masons last mm. year mm. and it's, it's basically a professional association of people in this industry. Mm. And it's about the individuals. Mm -hmm. And one thing that we noticed, we've had a couple of leadership sessions with our advisory mm -hmm. council members and other key uh, senior members, mm -hmm. and all of them are having the same problem, mm -hmm. without an exception, mm -hmm. and is getting access to talent. Mm -hmm. So there's a pipeline that's drying up. Mm -hmm. And you look at the average age of the folks that are actually in mm -hmm. this industry, mm -hmm. there aren't people to go back and backfill. Now, why mm -hmm. is that? because the majority of universities, mm. colleges, and even vocational training don't know that this industry exists. Mm. They don't know that they have huge career opportunities, mm. very good pay, mm. right? And the ability to go back and continue to expand their skills. Mm. So I think that awareness has to mm. come out to say, first off, the infrastructure that runs the world, mm. the internet of everything mm. is built, right? by the people, like in Infrastructure Masons. Mm. The people that actually build this infrastructure mm. and the ones that design the products and drive all the, co the contracts, mm. all of us play a part in that mm. digital ecosystem. Mm. And that underlying foundation mm. is where we need people to see mm. the opportunities. Mm. So I love this, uh, the STEM mm. thing from CNET. Mm. That's just one mm. start of it all, mm. is how do you get awareness to mm. kids mm. in middle school, going into college, mm. to be able to say, you know, simply, do you even mm. know what a data center is? Mm. Do you know that you use Snapchat and when you're on Facebook and you're doing all those things, mm. it's actually going back to that infrastructure. Yeah. yeah, and mm. so you can play a part in that infrastructure. Mm. But today, our problem is mm. that it's not known. Secondly, it's not sexy. Mm. When they go to school, they're going to go get a business degree, a finance mm. degree, or they're going to go into computer science. Well, but most into gaming as well. Yes, <laughs> yeah, but they're looking at all the things on top. Mm. But what they don't see today is the underlying foundation. None of that works mm. without this foundation. Mm. It's like the power plants. Mm. If they go off, you can't do anything. <laughs> mm. If the data centers go off, you can't drive all the innovation, you can't drive commerce, you can't drive those well, things. The power plants nowadays will be connected to a data center as well. Yes. So again, it comes back <laughs> to how critical this, this actually is. Yeah. Uh, in terms of education in schools, so young kids and everything, are we going to see infrastructure masons getting involved with kids as young as seven, for example, as well? Yeah, we're, we're uh, starting programs mm. here to uh, basically mm. open up the brand. Mm. And we have a brand problem. First off, okay. people don't know it exists. Secondly, okay. they don't know it's cool, right? Mm. They're looking at something else. So whether it's the university or going into vocational training mm. and other things to just get the exposure. Because mm. I'll tell you, um, this morning at our mm. session uh, here at uh, Cloud Congress, mm. I, I asked everybody, who here chose mm. this career, this industry? Yeah. Not right? many people do. You just fall into it. 98% <laughs> of the people said they had happened into this industry. Mm. So everybody's discovering it. It was my, mm. myself. I had no mm. idea that it existed, mm. right? I got my degree, I went in and I started doing mm. electrical engineering, and then from there, I basically grew up into mm. data centers mm. and understand the criticality of that one. Mm. But um, we need to get to lots mm. of people so that they know it, mm. and that inspiration can be as simple as mm. data center mm. tours. Okay. Having kids go walk in and see, mm. this is the heart of the internet. Mm. This is the underlying system. Mm. It's like mm. the matrix, right? You can see mm. under the covers. And also say, this is the cloud. Yeah, and this the is the is cloud. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's not in the ether. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it might be tangible, yeah, a yeah. real thing. But I think that exposure is probably uh, one of mm. the first things that we're mm. going to do mm. is just get people to mm. the data center mm. of all different ages mm. Um, mm. to be able to now have them mm. ex exposed to mm. it and see the opportunities mm. because we need the people. Mm. And we also need people that are nat naturally mm. in this industry mm. We need people that are outside to come mm. in with fresh thinking. Mm. As long as they're learners, mm. we can teach them this mm. industry. So just picking up on one last thought that you said before, so the people that work in this industry today, mm -hmm. uh, your partner at Infrastructure Masons, Christian from Microsoft, uh, said that we need to learn from learners, not yes. from knowers. Mm -hmm. Do you think there are a lot of people in this industry holding back innovation because they think they know way too much or they don't want to change the way they do things today? They are afraid of innovation, disruption, and disruption mm -hmm. in a good way because disruption disruption can be good. Yeah, um, I, I, so yes, I think yeah. there is. And, um, but I don't think they're knowingly doing mm. it. Okay. I think it's the, you know what, I've designed this mm. mousetrap this way, I've done it this mm. way, I know this works, mm. I'm gonna keep doing this. Mm. Um, you know, I, one of my best experiences mm. was when I walked into a room with my engineering team, my mm. data center design mm. engineering team, and I said, okay, the last data center we mm. did, really efficient, great stuff. Mm. 
But I've been hearing about fuel cells. Hmm. Do you think fuel cells could replace generators in UPS? Hmm. And they're like, no, no, no. I said, all right, hmm. we have a little time. I want you to stop everything you're doing, put it to the side, clean city paper. Hmm. I want you to go evaluate in the next three weeks. Hmm. Do you think that fuel cells could do this? Hmm. So they came back and we built the world's first data center with direct primary power from fuel cells. Mm -hmm. One of the most efficient out there, Again. right? And reliable. It was because that challenge came in, but mm -hmm. all it took was mm -hmm. a person asking the question to engineers so that mm -hmm. they could now release their barriers mm -hmm. and think about it that way. So mm -hmm. I think there is ways that the people that are here mm -hmm. need to be challenged mm -hmm. with different things so they can be learners mm -hmm. and break that mold. Mm -hmm. But on the other side, mm -hmm. a great example is what Christian Blotty was saying mm -hmm. uh, from Microsoft, mm -hmm. where he was saying he got um, professionals from the mm -hmm. Dairy Association. Mm. to be able to now think about how supply chain worked. Mm. Why? Because when their supply chain dies, mm. their food goes bad, right? Mm. The milk spoils mm. and they lose all profit. Mm. Well, so again, the, yeah. the criticality of what mm. they do in their supply chain, mm. now imagine if that goes into mm. the data center, whether well, it's mm. electro systems, cooling systems, mm. you know, just that entire supply chain, mm. it made them think differently mm. about how it's done. Mm. So that's the learners, mm. the ones that you give a chance to come in and say, okay, you've got potential and mm. experience in these other things. How would you look at this problem? Mm. Could you, would you mm. think about this differently? Mm. And they usually do. Mm. Does that so make sense? from scratch. Yeah. Sometimes it's better than trying to... Actually starting from here. a different point yeah. of view. Okay. Because that's really it. It's not mm. just about starting here. It's mm. how, do we, how do we make sure that mm. we are really openly thinking about a problem? Mm. And disruption comes when you say, forget mm. the way it's been done before. Mm. How would you do it now? Okay. Change your ways. Okay, Dean, thanks a lot yeah. for talking to me. Absolutely. Uh, don't forget you can follow Data Economy on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and also visit the website on www.data-economy.com.